Thanks for this witness. Thank you. Father, good evening and welcome. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Father David Mary Engo. I'm a Franciscan and a Catholic priest, which is why I'm dressed strangely as a Franciscan. And uh, Madam Chairwoman, Senators, uh, and all other former fetuses who are here in this room, I want to come to you on behalf of um, uh, asking you to vote down this uh, present uh, 152. Um, you know, the gentleman who is just here at this table said that uh, the church has never spoken about abortion in the early days, and that is not true. That is a pure lie. Uh, there's a document called the Didache. It's the teaching of the Twelve Apostles. It is the earliest writing we have of the Twelve Apostles outside of Scripture, which dates before the death of St. Peter, St. Paul, and the rest of the Apostles. In the Didache, it specifically states that Christians do not participate or procure abortions. He is absolutely false, and he misrepresented St. Augustine. St. Augustine, along with others in the history of the church, was seeking to understand when did life begin in the womb. That's what St. Augustine was wondering, because they didn't have the science to know when life actually began. We have come 2,000 years later, and now we have the science. We know. We know at the moment of conception, there is unique DNA to that particular person. If we found that unborn child's DNA, we would know it's not the mother, it is the child. Our science has shown us now that life begins at the moment of conception. Heartbeat, brainwaves, everything Father mentioned here. We have the science. And yet here we are arguing still over whether or not we have a right to take that person's life. To stop a human heart from beating is, by law, murder, last I checked. And here we are deciding if we can actually take it a step further, that if the child is born and aborted and survives, we can then kill it. How are we going to do that? So if this child survives the abortion, what's the plan to end this child's life? Are we going to smother it with a pillow? Let it starve to death? Are we going to stick a needle in its heart and inject something to stop its heart? What's the plan? What's the humane way of killing an unborn child? Cats and dogs and birds right now have more rights than an unborn child. And we know the science. And I understand there are difficulties and struggles in pregnancy. We know that. We understand that. And we have compassion for that. And there's more medical help for that now than ever before in our history. That abortionist sat here and talked about only the mother as the patient and treated abortion, the pregnancy as if it was a condition that had to be remedied. And how much money does he make from those procedures is my question. What financial, uh, 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 benefits. Uh, what's that? Benefits. benefits does he have from putting that forward? My, my, my friends, we have an opportunity in front of us right now to take the stand on, tr on life. You know, I, I can't, as Father Capoverdi was saying, how did we come to this point where we're debating Aborting a child in the third trimester. You know, when you go to take a flight and your flight gets canceled, it means either you aborted the plane, it never left the dock. When a flight is aborted, it means the flight was stopped in progress. We use the word abortion like it's nothing. Abortion means something that is in progress has been stopped. What's in progress? Life is in progress. It began at conception. The only difference between us and that unborn child, the moment of conception, is time and nutrition. That's it. That's it. We call the unborn child the fetus. Then we call it a, a, an infant. Then a toddler. We have all these names for these different stages, but it's still the same human person. To go forward with this law, it would be infanticide. And do we really want to be standing before God and be said to say that we enacted infanticide? Or do we want to reverse it and say, no, you know what? The unborn child deserves the right to life. It deserves the right of protection. It deserves the right of personhood because science tells us it is. Science tells us it is. I got to meet Jane Roe from Roe v. Wade. I had dinner with her. And Jane Roe regretted what had happened. Jane Roe asked the Supreme Court of the United States to vacate her case because she lied about being gang raped. God rest her soul. But she has apologized for what has happened with Roe v. Wade. Dr. Bernard Nathanson, the founder of National Abortion Rights Action League, the founder of a National Abortion Rights Action League, who coined the phrase pro-choice, 
had done thousands of abortions, even aborted his own child. And when he saw the sonogram, when he was doing the abortion and realized that he was ripping the child apart piece by piece in the first trimester, and the baby was moving away from the suction machine, and when it grabbed its foot, it, it opened its mouth to yell. When he saw what he was doing, he stopped because of the science and began to fight against everything he had built, against National Abortion Rights Action League, against NOW, against the phrase pro-choice, and became truly and really a defender and protector of life, and died a very holy death of a man who fought for the dignity and the rights of every unborn child. Yes, we are concerned for the health of the mother and so forth, but let's look at helping heal and help the mother and the child and not simply terminate a life so somebody else can have a better. Oh, we really want to, this doctor was saying, we want to kill a child so the mother can have a better life. The woman who sat in this chair, kill the child so the person can have a better life. Is that what we're come to now? We kill the poor so the rich can have a better life or so other poor can have a better life? Is that what we've come to? That that's how we financially solve our problems? Or do we support the mother and help her to have a better life? Father, I ask you, I please, ask you in the name of God, to please get rid of this law and enact laws that protect human life, the mothers and the childs, and respect and reverence the dignity of every single human life from the moment of conception to natural death. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Senator Matt. <laughs> and amen to you, Senator Metz. I love what you said earlier. Thank you. Ma'am, good evening and welcome. Hi.